Hey guys, Pops here, and today let's talk about my day two, day three update for my Ball Lightning Arc Mage Hierophant. At this point, I have also, on top of my 115, 115, gotten all my Void Stones, and I've gotten all my favorite slots. So I killed everything up to Maven, and then also um, the Fear. If you want to see me live, I'm over on twitch.tv slash Pastron. Everything I play is on stream, so you can also check out the VODs if you really want to. I got a lot to talk about, but since last time I wasn't really all that juiced, I will now show you a... I don't know, a Guardian map, for example. Let's say with Maven in there. Just real quickly to show you where the build is at currently. So I'm now at a stage in the game where I'm very happy with the build. And I have transitioned to the quad. Actually, five curse setup. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. And yeah, we're still not crit. That is still something we're going to do. But we did craft some ones, which I will show you soon. But as you can see right here, we're basically just absolutely waltzing through and just destroying everything. Uh, I'll just get to the boss real quickly. Kill some mobs on the way. Uh, it is absolutely breezing at this point. DPS, I think it's around about... I'll, I'll check it afterwards in POB. I'll link it down below anyways. But I think it's like 5, 6 mil or something. Um, but with the explosions, we're absolutely carrying. And it was more than enough to do all the non-Uber bosses. Uh, as for the crit respec, uh, we have also crafted two new ones that I'm going to show you. Um, however... In general, you need really good gear on top because you don't just, you don't want to fall over. And once you do the crit respec, you'll have to respec a lot of your defensive nodes to get some uh, extra crit there. Uh, I have some ideas how to solve that later down the road though. Let's just quickly do this. Let's get to the Phoenix. I'm going to pick this one up. Um, yeah, so right now I have in this build around about 10, 12-ish divines. And then the ones on top that we crafted today, which were kind of hype, uh, pretty big. As always, go in, sigil, throw down your uh, brand, do this. Uh, I also have the node where there's extra bosses here. So there's going to be some extra bosses on top, but it's all not really a problem. Staying at a distance because you can explode. And uh, yeah, there you go. Now, you might have seen that my energy shield was pretty well protected in this map. And that is uh, mainly because obviously there's no less recovery. Less recovery or no leech will absolutely stomp you. But on top of that, I also have a lot of damage now. And having extra damage means that your instant leech caps. And this is something a lot of people don't understand. Your leech is capped at a certain rate. 10%, 20%, depending on life or energy shield. However, your instant leech is only really capped. It is capped per instance, but to get to that instance, you need a ton of damage because after that, you just have so many singular hits. Think about life gain on hit, for example, how crazy that can get if you have like 100 hits per second. Think about how much damage you have after campaign, for example. Let's say after campaign, you have like, I don't know, 300k damage or something, but your HP is already quite high. It gets a little bit higher, but your damage goes from like 300k to like, 5 million. That's like more than times 10. Your HP doesn't go times 10. It goes like maybe times 2. So that's where the difference comes from. Your damage will completely overtake and at some point your recovery will feel absolutely awesome. But with that said, let's go over some of the changes. So I now have Kitava's Thirst right here. I got one with plus one maximum power charges, which isn't really necessary. I think GG would probably be Lightning Leech, which are also bought up quite quickly. Uh, there will be a lot of corrupted ones on the market once more out there because this is a very uh, common helmet but in general it's not necessary to have a corruption but if you also get plus two aoe or plus two curse that is also really really strong and on top of that i have anathema and this one basically makes it so my curse limit is equal to my power charges so what that does is right now i have five maximum power charges you do not need to generate them you just need to have the maximum that is now your curse limit which is five so i can have five curses four of them are in my kitavas right here with enfeeble elemental weakness punishment and conductivity very strong and then i have a fifth one which is optional that one i have in my arcanist brand together with my wave of conviction i put down the arcanist brand it's going to cast wave of conviction and also sniper's mark do not forget to later once your crit change this to assassin's mark it is actually stronger especially after the nerf to sniper's mark with that said what actually oh i also got a six link impulses just real quickly there is actually a beast that can six link your body armor which is way way cheaper than actually six linking it yourself so what you need is the black morrigan make sure that you search for this correctly because it's not, not an actually normal o and a crykick sand spitter if you have those two in the beast area you can actually six link whatever you want basically even uniques so that is currently 
like 130, 140 chaos. It will probably go up over time as people figure this out, but it is 100 times cheaper than just going for orb refusings or tainted orb refusings. Also, a lot of people ask me when to go for impulsos. I would say a five link impulsos is better than a six link normal body armor. Then again, especially if you're on hardcore or soul Stefan, you don't have to stress out for impulsos. As you could see, the clear is great. But in terms of defenses, it lacks quite a bit. Now, otherwise, what changed? So I went from um, the Illuminated Devotion now to Conviction of Power. Because this gives me one maximum power charge for the extra curse limit. And it also gives me Endurance Charges always. One thing I've found is that Call to Arms support with Enduring Cry isn't up as much as I would like to. And it is up, for example, against bosses because you get a lot of power. You get three immediately. But it just wasn't that as consistent as always having them. So in general, I really like the Conviction of Power. I don't think it's like 100% the choice, but I think at this point, definitely the choice. Now, obviously, we're not crit yet. It is still worth going Elemental Overload. But obviously, once we're crit that, crit chance. After that, Conviction of Power is always GG. So what I did here to replace the Leech from uh, the Ascendancy is a Vala Sign once again with Anathema, which robs me of a lot of Chaos Resistance because I do not have uh, the Amethyst Ring. So I'm only on 13% Chaos Res uh, together with my Flask only on 48. So it is, uh, obviously this mastery helps out, but it is a little bit criminal in general. Where you actually want to get this Leech from is from your Conjurer Gloves. You can get up to like 0.6 or 0.7 Leech per second. The higher, the better. Now, the problem is you will need Eldritch Currency. And um, if you want to roll like Tier 3 Eldritch Currency, it's going to be quite expensive. Especially if you want to upgrade your roll with an Orb of Conflict. But I will do it eventually. I'll get like 0.5 Leech and then I will replace the Valakos. Now, if you can get your hands in the meantime on a Valakos with Bleed Immune or even Poison Immune, that is absolutely insane. Just so you know. I'll probably, once I skip the Valakos, put Bleed Immune somewhere here. I don't think it's like 100% necessary. I haven't really died to it. I mostly just died to Corrupted Blood, which I'm immune to anyways. But it's still nice to have. In general, I'm happy when this ring is gone. But yeah, the only thing that changed for my gloves is I rolled some Eldritch Currency. And I did hit Lightning Exposure, which isn't all that necessary because I have Wave Conviction anyways. But it's nice to have it while mapping as well when I'm not putting down my Arcanist brand. And also a Nerve is just a lot. Like It's like enemies take 10% increased damage, right? Otherwise, these gloves had not changed at all. I think I didn't have this one last time. Yeah, I have a Stygian Vice now, which is basically just three mods and crafted mana. But it does have that Chaos Res roll. It has a high life roll and a little bit of flask effect duration. Goes a long, long way. This jewel I bought right here, I got this one as an absolute bargain. I think I paid like 20 cares or something. So this one's also really nice. If you can get mana, life, and then cast speed if you've dealt a critical strike recently, that is absolutely huge. I also upgraded my boots. Basically, this one just has an extra suffix. It now has dexterity. It also has a perfect chaos res roll. I think I paid a divine for this one straight up because I just said, screw it. Also, I got the action speed from just lesser Eldritch Embers. There's no real reason to roll higher. You can get 5% if you want to spam these, but these cost like 4 Chaos per. You're never going to hit it just for 1% action speed. Just throw on 4% and you're going to be happy. And uh, the other one, avoid being poisoned. Pretty much useless. My amulet is also still the same. Uh, absolute trash. I didn't even bother recrafting that life because I'm obviously... I'm going to get an upgrade soon enough, right? And my wands are also still the same. The one I crafted myself and the one I bought for 2 Chaos... Still the same. You just don't need anything else. Uh, in terms of flasks, I now actually made good flasks or decent flasks. My Quicksilver is okay. Um, I have a Topaz flask. As you can see, the rolls are not great, but I have something on it. I now have to try LE setup with uh, Topaz flask, Ruby flask with reduced effect of curses, which is very important at this stage, especially in red maps. And then I also got a Taste of Hate with 15%. Uh, from hits taken as cold. This one helps a ton against physical hits. Also, some people have been asking whether I want to automate with reuse at the end of effect or when charges reach full. Usually when I'm not a Pathfinder, I really like use when charges reach full. It means when you're at the boss, it's not going to constantly drain and you can actually time it a little bit, which is quite nice. But yeah, if you have just one thing here, like reduce flash charges used, flask effect duration, increase flash charges gained. Th those are all great, and it will make a huge difference in terms of your flask up time. In terms of last link, I have Spell Echo in, but I know a lot of people who weren't really happy with Spell Echo, and that's totally fine. I really highly value cast speed. I want a profane one, and I want high cast speed in general. And if you can't get that, 
I can understand that Spellaker doesn't feel good. You can also try out Pinpoint. Later when we're crit, you can also go increased critical strike support. But it is a great support for so many reasons. First up, the second cast, the Repeat, actually doesn't cost any mana. So it actually has way less stress on your mana, even though it says 150% cost and Reservation Mastery. You will see the difference quite clearly, especially once you have a six link. Now... The other thing is also that your leech is going to get way more consistent because now you have almost double the amount of hits. Another thing that changed is I actually got a large cluster jewel. I did respec out of this right here. So once your curse set up, you basically don't want the chance to treat enemy monsters resistances as inverted mastery anymore because now with elemental weakness and conductivity, you're getting enemies resistances to below zero. So what you're doing is, let's say you reduce them to minus 20. Now what you're doing is actually getting them to plus 20. So you're actually screwing your damage. Very important to note because your curses are always up with the Kitava summon. Always, always, always. So what I did is I, I did some more efficient pathing up top. And now I have access to a cluster jewel right here. And that cluster jewel, the most important note here is scintillating idea. And then you just kind of fill it up. Here I have Prismatic Heart, which helps a little bit with res. But there's also Doriani's Lesson, which gives you 0.2 life leech, which isn't perfect. It's probably not going to be enough to ever leech cap unless you have crazy damage. But that together with the gloves can help quite a bit. And back there, I'm not really taking this. It's just widespread destruction. Honestly, there isn't really an easy way to craft this. You can try with fossils, but I just bought mine straight up. This is not something you need anytime soon, especially before you have uh, really good jewels, but it's something you want to work towards. Otherwise, not much changed here. I have this soul life note here. I should be specced into this jewel right here, but I didn't really have currency earlier to buy anything. Now I'm a little bit uh, more stacked again. But yeah, in general, the tree is still pretty darn similar. One thing that we have to talk about now is when can you actually go into the quad curse setup and when can you go into the crit setup? This is the question I'm getting the most and it's just kind of hard to say because it's something that you have to feel out for yourself, right? It depends on what kind of gear you have. Some people that linked me their gear, they have literally better gear than me and they still haven't pulled the trigger. It just is what it is. But I can give you a little bit of a hint. First up, obviously, you have to have the two uniques that this revolves around, Anathema and Kitavas first. And... The second thing you need, though, is better rare gear. You have to remember, you are now replacing Mind Spiral with a helmet that gives you literally nothing. It reduces your cast speed, right? It gives you a tiny bit of mana and has like 47 energy shield and a little bit of armor that would not even scale. It. That is a big deal. There's no resistances here. There's no mana recoup here like Mind Spiral had. And the same goes for Anathema. If you look at this, there is not much defensive here at all. It's literally cast speed and then the effect we know about, right? But there's no, there's not an amethyst ring that has like 50 chaos res and like cast speed and life and the mana roll. So you have to make up for that on the rest of your gear. So your gear has to be ironclad. For example, you have to have chaos resistance rolls on stuff. One easy way to do that is to craft with essences of envy. Chaos resistance is extremely hard to actually roll on gear. So if you can get like a shrieking, which goes from 26 to 30 and you take that away already and you hit either life or mana and a resistance you're already done then you just craft on whatever is missing either life or mana and, and you already have a, a decent thing but what i want you to understand is that introducing two un new uniques into your build will make it a lot more fragile so just be careful that you can actually pull it off do not forget however that you're getting some of that defensiveness back with enfeeble because enemies deal a lot less damage especially normal and magic mobs will not just willy-nilly one shot you anymore and this is just up all the time people talk to me about oh it's only 50 percent chance to trigger you're hitting like you're attacking so much and has a 0.1 second cooldown the curses are always up the only thing you need to be careful of is especially hex proof maps and then also i think it goes up to 60 percent less curse effect do not forget that that less curse effect scales with map modifiers so while this makes your curses not completely useless it's still nice if, if the map has nothing else dangerous you can still run it but I would say always reroll hexproof. Small note on there, by the way, some people have been saying they have huge dex problems. Uh, level down your sniper's mark. It's literally the only dex gem that you need. However high you can. Once you have assassin's mark, that's totally removed. And then you only need like 111 dexterity. It makes it a lot easier. Sniper's mark, like leveling it is like 1% increased damage per level, but that's not worth breaking your bank to fix that dexterity now what do you need to respec into crit and that is quite a bit if you looked into my end game 
guide, which I'm going to link down below again. Now, obviously, it's not perfect. That was before the league, right? So I'll have a lot more new ideas. There might even be a main skill change. Who knows? I might even uh, change from ball lightning to something else. But the idea stays the same. The crit respec needs a lot more gear. And that is not just uh, because you want to deal more damage. It's also because now your gear is going to be way more crowded with that crit multi rolls and critical strike chance for spells. So today on stream, uh, we crafted two ones. The first one is this one right here. Disregard the physical damage. It's basically just crit chance for spells, mana, cast speed, crit multi, right? Uh, same thing here. Crit multi, spell damage, cast speed, crit chance for spells. You see this here? I have two extra mods on my ones versus what I have here. But they don't just like appear out of nowhere. You have to actually have the money and the resources to craft these and to actually make these. You can't just go and say, oh, I'm just going to make the same wand minus the mana, but with crit multi. That's not a good trade-off, right? That, that is not going crit. Crit means you add stuff. So you need way better gear than you currently have. People are going crit way too early. The version I just showed you was without those ones, just completely non-crit. So until you get into crazy content, it's just not really needed. Now, in order to craft those ones, I can't really help you out much right now. The GG would be to have fractured mana. The fractured market right now is absolutely dried up, not just of mana gear, but in general. So it is quite hard to craft some of these ones. You want a profane wand, but there's also other bases that have 10% cost speed. There's actually a few. You have to, to look them up yourself, but um, those are also fine. And crit multi is not the best fracture. Mana would be the single best fracture, but you take what you can. Uh, fractured crit multi, fractured spell damage, fractured critical strike chance for spells, and if you can, fractured cost speed, fractured mana, whatever. And then what you do is you kind of substitute. For example, I don't have fractured cast speed and I really want cast speed. So I'm going to craft with Shrieking Essences of Misery. Why not with Deafenings? Because I don't have the currency to pay three times per roll and then maybe get an extra 4% cast speed for that. Those are all things you have to consider. Now, the way you make a wand like this is I basically spam these cast speed essences until I get either only high mana or a really good mod like tier one spell crit and a little bit of mana. You cannot go without mana. You need to hit some form of mana. It is wasted if you don't. Now, obviously this is a tier eight mana roll, so it is not by any means a great one, but it is a serviceable one. And then I had a fourth mod that is completely worthless, but what you do then is you use the new Veiled Orbs. These right here, and they cost quite a bit of pop, but they remove a random modifier and then add a random Veiled modifier. And that random Veiled modifier can be something really good. Like for example, that spell damage with non-chaos is extra chaos. I would have preferred spell damage mono region. So that's obviously even better. Lightning damage is good, right? All of that jazz. But if you get that, now you not only did you annul a shitty mod, you also added a good mod. And that is literally it, right? I paid uh, around about a divine each for these bases, although they are getting more expensive by the minute. Don't worry, you, Crit Multi is not the best Fracture. Just get any good Fracture right here so you have something to start out with. Otherwise, it's going to be an absolute pain to craft these. And don't necessarily only go for Profane One. If you lose like 4% cost speed and go to 10%, it's not the end of the world either. But what I'm trying to say is for these two in total, I probably paid like 12 Divines for both to craft. So that is a massive investment. And that is only the first step, right? Obviously, step by step. Now... The second one is actually getting good jewels with crit multi. I'm not really done with that yet, but for example, I have a little bit crit multi here on my corrupted blood jewel. I have a crit multi with lightning skills roll here. I have double crit multi here. Uh, do I have anything else? I gotta remember. Yeah, also a little bit of crit multi here while dual wielding, which is also a mod that a lot of people are forgetting about. Now, if you have this much crit multi already on your wands, it's not as important to get them on your jewels, but it's still a huge damage increase nonetheless the third thing you need is an immutable force with a minimum of 931 stun and block recovery now i have a 942 roll right here i'm going to quickly explain why that is let's look it up on uh, power exile trade so if i have 931 right here which is the break point uh the price currently is around about two to three to bind the reason we need this is with the crit version i will have soul of the brine king which gives me 30 percent stun and block recovery in total in order for your stun block recovery to get the stun down to a fraction, it's 0.033 seconds, you need that. If you don't have 961, but you only have 960 stun block recovery, you're going to be 
stun for double as long. It's still going to be fine. You're still not going to stand around. It's it's not even 0 0.1 uh, like seconds, right? But it is still a big difference and it's something to invest into and very worthwhile to keep in mind. So if you're not running Soul of the Brian King, you need 961 from Justice. There is also other sources of stun and block recovery. You're going to have to, to figure that out. There's some stuff on Flask and whatnot. Now, the reasons why I'm saying you need stun and block recovery is because once we go crit, we don't have the points to do these shenanigans right here, right? Like all of this path thing that is just kind of going nowhere, right? Obviously, Battle Rouse, super good. Dynamo, good. I'm going to probably anoint Battle Rouse over Dynamo, by the way. But we'll talk about that when we're there. But all of this here is going to go into uh, high voltage, into an, another cluster jewel, maybe even a medium cluster. It's going to go into arcane potency and probably even annihilation. And then the fourth thing you need is you need to make up for the chaos rescue you're going to lose from the amethyst flats. Now, you don't necessarily need to replace the amethyst flats. You can also replace maybe a ruby or a topaz if you want to. In general, your rare gear just has to be incredible. You don't want to cap your resistances with these flasks, just to make that clear. If they're not up and you're getting one shot, that is not that good. You're not a pathfinder, right? Make sure that's not the case. Um, in general, your gear just has to be ironclad because now you're introducing even more uniques into the build. Uh, you're introducing immutable force. Whatever resistances you might have had in the suffixes from your wands is now gone as well. So yeah, all in all, just make sure you actually have good enough gear so you can put in your diamond flask. You can have an immutable force so you don't get destroyed by stuns. You can actually get a lot of damage because you have crit multi, better wands, and all of that jazz. I completed feared on elemental overload. That's all you need to unlock. So um, in general, I feel pretty confident about the build. But it's still important to know where you go. Now, a lot of people were asking me about how I make my first currency. And basically, after I had my Atlas Tree 1 done right i had everything completed i'm obviously not on wavering vision anymore i got into my atlas passive tree too and what i'm now doing is basically boss rushing with destructive play this makes it so extra bosses are spawning at the end but you have to kind of full clear before so you have to make sure that you have good layouts but you're getting more bosses and that is good for a few reasons map bosses can drop uh, an additional conquer map it can drop extra Elder Guardian, Shaper Guardian maps. If you, for example, see this chaos right here that I made, this is all from just Guardian maps. This is obviously not a full uh, Atlas guide here, but uh, I'll link it down in the description if you really want to. I don't think it, this is perfect whatsoever. It's actually kind of embarrassing, but it is what it is. And uh, we're probably going to try out some more focused strats soon. But what I did then is I also added Expedition because you can actually get a 100% Expedition chance now. So it's just super cheap. You get Extreme Archaeology. Now, here is where getting Impulsos is actually really important because if you don't have Impulsos and you don't have those explosions, um, these can get quite overwhelming, just so you know. We have the good old Nico packed with energy with mining byproducts. I actually have quite a bit of Azerite farmed up at this point. I think it must be over like 50,000 or something right now. So, for example, if you go here, uh, purchase items, you have like 56,000. Now, one of these costs 300 and should be worth like round about a chaos. Yeah, 140 of these are a divine right now. So, if I do the math, 140 times 300, you'll see that for 42, yeah, like 1.5 divines here sitting in these resonators. Now, important with the strat is just that you go to the boss fast, but you also clear on the way. You don't want to do extra stuff like breaches, legions, or blights or something that just distract you. You're not specced into them, just ignore them, right? Most of your money will come from the expedition in the map, and then also from the bosses at the end. Important to note also for this is that for destructive play to work and to get extra atlas bosses you need to witness the map which means you need to actually do different maps for maven to complete and then at the end you need to complete the invitation which means you should probably put a lot of different maps here as your favorites so you don't get shitty layouts so you don't get i don't know sulfur vents but maybe you get a tropical island but okay i have the atlas tree down below in the description i'll probably talk about this at some point i'll also talk about these random scarab nodes i've taken right here i'm not even 100 percent sure if they're good right now we're currently just testing them out just in case you're wondering why the hell i'm like pathing so weirdly but yeah that's about it obviously next is going to be the crit respec i don't know 100 if i'm gonna stay with ball lightning or if it's going to be something else but i'm definitely staying on this build on the hero fan at least another three four days so there's going to be at least one more update when i have everything ready maybe even a new build guide if i'm doing something different 
But in general, I uh, hope you guys had uh, a good leak so far. If you have any questions, or if you want to hang out on stream over on twitch.tv slash drop by. But with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.